China just released a new AI model that could break the entire AI industry. I'm talking about DeepSeek version 3.1, a model so powerful it's going head to head with ChatGPT5. They quietly uploaded it to Hugging Face, dropped a note in a WeChat group, and boom, within hours, the entire AI world was freaking out. Why? because it performs like the most expensive AI models, but costs 68 times less to use. Think about that for a second. If you're paying $70 to run a complex coding task with other models, DeepSeek version 3.1 does the same thing for about a dollar for enterprises or startups running thousands of tasks daily. That is the kind of gap that changes entire budgets. The release caught people off guard not because of marketing or hype, but because of raw numbers. In programming challenge, it dominated the Ada Polyglot benchmark with 71.6%, beating Claude Opus 4 and multi-language coding tasks. And it processes information three times faster than its previous version. Now, I know what you're thinking. If this is so good, why haven't I heard about it? So, DeepSeek is a Chinese company. They don't have the marketing machine that OpenAI or Anthropic have. They just build incredible AI and release it to the world. They literally just uploaded 685 billion parameters worth of AI to Hugging Face without even writing a description. They cracked the code on efficient AI training. While other companies were throwing money and compute power at the problem, DeepSeek figured out how to do more with less. They used something called a mixture of experts architecture and it's like having a massive team of specialists but only calling in the experts you need for each specific job. Moreover, this model stretches the context window to 128,000 tokens, giving it the capacity to handle massive inputs without slowing down. In Chinese characters, it works up to roughly around 100 to 160,000, which is the equivalent of about 1 16th of a dream of the Red Mansions, one of the country's longest classics. You could paste in 50 pages of code and ask it to optimize the whole thing, and it does all of this while costing almost nothing. People immediately started stress testing it by throwing huge tests at it, and while the model could realistically manage about one tenth of something that massive, the results were accurate and fast. Speed was another part of the surprise. Previous reasoning heavy models often slowed to a crawl when processing complex queries. Version 3.1 ripped through those same tasks with almost instant responses. Developers noted right away that something had changed under the hood, and it was not just scaled up, it was optimized. The architecture explained a lot. DeepSeek had introduced what they are calling a hybrid architecture. Earlier hybrid attempts usually ended up in disappointment with the models that tried to do reasoning, chatting, and coding, but ended up mediocre across the board. Version 3.1, for the first time ever, makes those roles work together. The separate R1 label for reasoning is gone. Now everything defaults to version 3.1. If you ask DeepSeek what model it is now, it will simply say DeepSeek version 3. Clean and simple. Community researchers digging into the weights discover something else. Four hidden tokens, search begin and search end for real-time search, plus think and end thing for internal reasoning. This means that version 3.1 can think privately before giving you an answer, and if connected, it can even fetch information from the web. Those discoveries hinted at features people have been waiting for, native reasoning and native search in one open source package, and the benchmarks kept backing up this excitement. On the SVG bench, which tests visual and structural reasoning, version 3.1 ranked just behind GPT 4.1 Mini, far surpassing DeepSeek's earlier R1. On MMLU, the standard test for broad language understanding, it held its own against GPT 5. GPT 5 still performed better on graduate level Q&A and advanced software engineering, but the fact that an open model came this close was a milestone. Even on tricky logical comparisons like the 9.1 1 versus 9.9, .9, version 3.1 got it right showing it was less prone to those classic numerical mistakes. Cost efficiency, though, was what kept making headlines. Andrew Christensen, an AI researcher, pointed out to the numbers plainly, 71.6% on Ader, 1% above Claude Opus 4, and 68 times cheaper. That kind of proof hit hard because it was not abstract, it was practical, and people could calculate exactly how much money this would save them in a real world 
world workflow. Now, I need to be honest with you about something. There are some limitations you should know about. First, because DeepSeek is a Chinese company, the model follows Chinese regulation. That means it won't discuss certain political topics. If you ask it about sensitive political issues, such as the Tiananmen Square, well, it will deflect or refuse to answer. Second, like all AI models, DeepSeek version 3.1 has its strengths and weaknesses. It excels at math, programming, and text analysis, but for tasks like visual reasoning or complex spatial understanding, other models might perform better. But for business use, coding, writing, math, analysis, and most text-based tasks you'd want to do with AI, these limitations rarely matter. And here's something else that's important. Because this model is open source, you're not locked into using DeepSeek platform. You can download the entire model and run it on your own servers if you want. That is huge for businesses. It means you have complete control over your data. You're not sending sensitive information to companies' servers. You can keep everything in-house. But the timing of the launch also could not have been more calculated. OpenAI had just rolled out GPT-5. Anthropic has just released Claude 4. Both were marketed as cutting-edge frontier systems locked behind APIs with premium pricing. DeepSeek chose that exact moment to upload version 3.1 quietly without fanfare as a free download. The message was clear. While American companies guard their frontier systems like intellectual property, DeepSeek was treating its frontier model as public infrastructure. That approach lines up with China's national strategy. Back in 2020, their 14th five-year plan explicitly favored open source AI. The idea was to accelerate adoption worldwide by giving away powerful models even if it meant losing short-term on profits. And it's working. Hugging Face's trending list has been dominated by Chinese releases lately, and version 3.1 shot straight into the top five within hours. The developer community reaction was immediate and overwhelming. Hugging Face's own head of product, Victor Mustar, tweeted that open source AI is at its peak, pointing directly at models like this. This was not the first time DeepSeek rattled the industry, though. Back in January, when they unveiled the original version 3, they revealed that training only cost 5.6 a million dollars using about 2,000 slower NVIDIA chips. This was unheard of in a world where people assumed hundreds of millions were required to train frontier systems. The news alone wiped $600 billion off NVIDIA's market cap in a single day. Governments, however, quickly banned the chatbox version of DeepSeek over fears that user data would sit on Chinese servers. With version 3.1, things are different. This is not just a chatbox. It's an open model released to the world. The economics here are brutal for competitors. Traditional AI development is built on massive investment, data centers, research talent, compliance, and those costs have to be recoupled through high API fees. DeepSeek flipped that model upside down. By giving away advanced capabilities, they accelerate adoption while forcing closed competitors to justify their prices. Now, let's talk about what this means for different types of users. If you're a developer, DeepSeek version 3.1 is a game changer. I asked it to create a simple mobile mobile app landing page. It built a complete, professional-looking page with modern design, proper styling, and call-to-action buttons. It even included placeholder content and made it responsive. For content creators, this model is incredible for research and writing. I asked it to create a three-day Kyoto itinerary. It generated a detailed, culturally accurate guide with specific templates, timing, transportation tips, and even cultural etiquette notes. The level of detail was incredible. For business owners, the automation possibilities are endless. Complex calculations, detailed analysis, problem solving, all at a fraction of the cost of other models. Enterprises will soon be asking themselves a simple question. Why pay premium rates for closed models when a frontier-level open one is sitting there waiting to be deployed? DeepSeek's official community has already exploded past 80,000 members, and that momentum is not slowing. Researchers like Tier Taxes had been saying for a while that DeepSeek would eventually collapse its separate model lines into a single product. And with version 3.1, that prediction has come true, and the impact goes beyond benchmarks. For the first time, smaller teams are proving that they can compete at the frontier without spending hundreds of millions. The myth that only the largest United States labs can build these systems is breaking down. 
The AI race isn't about nationality, it's about who can build the most efficient technology for specific use cases, and right now DeepSeek is winning in the cost efficiency and specific performance areas like math and programming. While OpenAI was doing press tours and Anthropic was writing blog posts, DeepSeek was quietly solving the fundamental problems of AI efficiency, and now they've leapfrogged everyone in specific areas. The question is, are you going to take advantage of these strengths, or are you going to to wait for everyone else to figure it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, while you're there, hit the subscribe and like button to get frequent updates of the AI world before everyone else.